class, thank you for listening to this lesson. We, today we're going to continue with our lesson um, in mental health and psychiatric nursing too. It's my hope that you have been well. And in this class, we're going to talk about psychiatric therapies. Psychiatric therapies, uh, they are used to, to manage mental illnesses. Uh, there are two types of therapies. The first one is we are going to concentrate mainly on psychotherapies. Uh, then we will later discuss uh, about biological thera therapies. Psychotherapies mainly, uh, they are based on what you covered in mental health nursing one, um, about fruit, psychoanalytics theories, and th these therapies are based on the psychological experiences in early life of a client. Uh, there, are, there are several of them. We will discuss about psychoanalysis, brief therapy, group therapy, family therapy, biofeedback, hypnotherapy, cognitive behavioral uh, therapy. All these therapies uh, are based on the experiences of an individual. There is no use of any medical intervention, but we use mainly psychological interventions. Starting with the first one, which is psychoanalysis. This is a, an approach which is based on theory that there is a relationship between mental processes and all past experiences in re reference to what we had covered in Mental Health One. The aim is uh, helps the patient to discover their unconscious motivations for maladaptive behavior. Patients, when they are exposed in this, uh, when they were young, they might have uh, captured some unco uh, unconscious behaviors which all may have been exposed to, uh, to stressors which might have affected their, uh, their own individual behavior later in life. During this uh, session of therapy, the patient will be brought to an awareness of their unconscious assumptions based on their earlier events which of course um, dictate their current behavior. For example, a patient might be, might be brought to understand um, that their anger directed to other people was associated with a previous exposure when they were young. There are specific fundamental rules of psychoanalysis which are based mainly on free association. This is where the patient is allowed or motivated to say whatever comes into their minds without any conscious control of what they are supposed to say. And in this case, the setting is that the patient sits on a couch, should not face the, the therapist. The ther therapist should be in a place where the patient is not in direct view of the, uh, of the therapist. And therefore, the patient is encouraged to say as much as they can be able to say. In such a case, they will, be, they will expose their feelings, their thoughts, their fantasies, their parental, uh, child parent ex uh, experiences, and therefore, they, they will be kind of get to a state of trance which they will talk about things that they might suppress, they might have suppressed when they were young. In that case, the therapist should not take any history, should not uh, associate with any drug or advise the patient on what the patient should say, but have to remain passive, only uh, li listens and interprets the patient's wordings. The, the process involves uh, that there is transference management by the patient. 
the patient should not uh, decide what to say. They are supposed to talk and should not manage their own um, imaginations. There is also counter transparency by the analyst, in which the analyst is, is expected not to control what the patient is saying or uh, manage what the patient is, uh, is saying. There's, the third process is therapeutic alliance, in which case there should be mutual trust between the patient and the therapist. That the, the therapist has to reassure the patient that the therapist will not disclose their, uh, the conversation and the events that are affecting the patient to, the, to anybody. There is also dream interpretation. The patient is expected to inform the therapist about the themes of their dream. What kind of dreams do they dream? And are they horrific kind of dreams? And what takes the day? Is it uh, nice dreams or are they dreams that are going to affect the patient's um, psychological um, management? Then there is also resistance of overcoming, in which case the patient is expected to talk without restraining or, uh, or, or without prayer imagination of what they are supposed to say. There are indications for psychoanalysis. They are indicated for anxiety disorders, for example, phobias and obsessive compulsive disorders, in which case uh, the patient becomes anxious about many situations. They fear, they are afraid of, of like snakes, uh, they are afraid of, of, of uh, cockroaches, and I'm sure each one of you have some fears, some phobias that you could have a fear about. You cannot explain what might have triggered that kind of behavior. And in that case, and say, uh, psychoanalytic disorders, such kind of anxieties can be uh, helped to be managed. The other indication is for sexual disorders. You have had uh, people who have s uh, sexual dysfunctions, and in that case, they, they can be managed because uh, through psychoanalysis, when they share the information, they could have, it could have been originated from their experiences when they were young. The other condition is schizophrenia. Most of the schizophrenic patients, it has been discovered that they behave in, uh, they experience those uh, symptoms of schizophrenia, like hallucinations, and they are associated with uh, specific experiences when they were young. We also manage depression because uh, it is also a neurotic condition. And in that case, the patient will have uh, to discuss about it and be able to link the cause of the depression. Then we also manage the psychosomatic illnesses, the illnesses that are associated with psychosomatic, like psychoneurotic conditions, uh, whereby the patient can be managed in their, uh, in their condition. They, are, they have contraindications for psychoanalytic, uh, psychoanalytic uh, approaches. One of them is advanced age. For elder patients above 40, because these patients, they, they, are, they are not able to be corrected. They have already had experiences that, uh, that have modified their behavior at a, a higher extent, and therefore they are quite inflexible. Therefore, what we do is we use other management approaches that we are going to discuss. We also do not uh, advocate this for antisocial patients or uh, patients with antisocial personality disorder because these are patients who are arrogant and they cannot be treated uh, because of change of their behavior. They are quite stubborn patients. The second uh, approach that we are discussing is brief therapy. It has other names. 
the, uh, that is strategic therapy or solution focused brief therapy. This is a therapy that is also time limited and we focus only on a short duration. It helps the patient deal with the current crisis. For example, if a patient has a stressor in their life, you can approach it through brief therapy, in which case you want to understand the patient's situation, approach it in a counseling session, you understand their situation, you give them ideas on how to manage their situation. That is through, uh, through brief therapy. You just want to understand how do they approach the situation and how do they deal with their lives. How do they manage their specific life issues? In a brief therapy, the, the therapist will take responsibility for being more pre proactive with the client. The client, uh, the, the, the therapist will treat clinical um, uh, conditions faster because it ha they will be more subjective to the client. Brief therapy is often highly strategic. It f only focuses on the patient's situation. It's, it also explore, uh, explore, there is also exploration of, to understand more of their problem. So it is solution-based approach. It is usually less concerned on how the patient problem arose. That's not a concern of the therapist. But what is the current uh, effect of the problem? What is the current problem that is the patient is experiencing? In brief therapy, we use it to manage depression. We also use it to manage anxiety disorders and also post-traumatic stress disorders, which occur as a result of experience of uh, uh, um, stressors, like, like a loss of a, a loved one or loss of a job. So it requires a brief kind of intervention. I hope we are together. Let us continue the third therapy, which is group therapy. And group therapy is important in the management of problems that face a group, problems that uh, can be shared in the group. It requires training in the recognition and utilization of the specific events. The patients have to be ready to socialize. If a patient is not ready to socialize, for example, they will not ma uh, get an advantage of this therapy. They have to accept their situation. They will look, have to mirror image themselves and understand that if they interact with the others, they will be able to look at what has the other people experienced and they reflect that in their life situation. There is also communality. In which case, the patient have to, they have to be brought together. They have to be in a state of mind that they can be brought together and live with others, stay with others for interaction. There is also sharing of emotions because the patients, uh, they, ha they will have to experience some emotions when they are sharing their situation. They could be bring em their emotional uh, experiences or expression of the emotions and therefore we have the, the members have to understand how do they manage uh, the, the, in case a patient experiences or demonstrates their emotions. In group therapy there are specific types. There's closed groups. These are groups that run over a duration of time. So by the time they are starting off uh, between 8 to 10 patients. They should have the right number of the patients. They should, ha they should be ready to run for a specific duration of time with their objectives well set. And there is no new membership. They have to fit into the objectives and the rules of the group. When they come together, they have to be ready to understand each other and to cope with each other. 
Then we also have the open groups. The open groups are usually, they have no fixed time period. They are open. So any patient can join in, can interact with the, with the other members of the group. When they gain their experience or when they are, they are sure that they have been managed well by the others through sharing of experiences, they can exit the group at their own will. And any other group, any other person can join in at any time. Examples of open group therapies are the Alcoholic Anonymous, which we call them the AA Anonymous, also Narcotic Anonymous. And so mainly we, you, we use the open groups to manage behaviors that can be simulated or they can be modeled by others. How is the group process? The group process involves the patient sitting in uh, an, uh, an open ground in a circle and therefore they are able to share their experiences. The therapist will just initiate the starting off. In that, that case there will be a leader in the group, there will be somebody to moderate others amongst the group members, not the therapist. So the therapist will allow that kind of development of, of the patient's confidence and listening and watching and contributing in the group. The session is held once or twice a week and each session will run between one to two hours. In that case, the patients will have to interact freely without interaction from the, the therapist. I'm sure uh, you have participated many times as groups, even in the social life, you, 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 you've experienced that kind of where uh, uh, the students or you as members of a group, you interact and you are free to air your views. And that is the kind of group approach that we use so that the patients can express their own issues and be modeled by others. Therapeutic factors in a group therapy. What do you expect with this? And how do you monetize therapies that, to know that the patients are gaining? This is through interpersonal learning, whereby the patient have to be ready to learn from others, to ad adapt their behaviors or, or relations with others. There's also issue of the group cohesion. The group, they have to have that sense of being ready to have oneness, they to value each other, to belong to one another as a group. There should be insight self-understanding. One has to understand their own issues for them to, to be able to share with others, create awareness amongst others and understand the motives and actions of others and also themselves. They have to develop that socializing technique to understand how do we, what are the limitations of this group. You will not have people bringing in chaos into the group. They should adhere to their objectives of the group. Then there should be universally, in, that, in which case the, student, the, the patients should recognize that their own problems are not unique. They can share with others and discover that others actually can share with, with them such kind of experiences. There is installation of hope to the others, positive hope for positive change. And also there is now the guidance, which they receive guidance from others through information and the interaction with other members of the group. And in that case, group will only be indicated for people who are willing to participate and willing to adhere to the group objectives. Patients who are ready to control their impulse, not coming with their anger and being coming to interrupt the session, they have to understand their own impulsive behavior and change or, or monitor their impulsive behavior. They should be ready uh, to avoid 
those behaviors like the alcohol and other drugs they have to be to have acknowledged their problem and therefore ready to stop the behavior it can also be used for patients who have had sexual abuses when they were young in the in childhood or people with difficulties in socializing because they keep on reminding themselves that they have to adhere to the rules and the policies of the group and in that case they will have to to remodel their own behavior as expected by the group members otherwise they will be thrown out of the group the fourth therapy that we are going to talk about is family therapy and family therapy has been used for many years for managing issues related to the family and also marital issues it focuses on 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 the interaction pattern of members of the of our family it's highly expressed emotions because of course a family therapy requires a kind of accusation and reaccusation kind of behavior where a family member will bring an issue that has really been a, a case in their family in their homes and therefore it has to be discussed amongst themselves the therapist is not expected to control their emotions only comes in at the end of the session so that they can interpret their, their, their interaction. It focuses on altering the interaction among the family members and modify the stress, stressful habits among the members, which is expected for couples and also for siblings uh, if it goes beyond control in the family. The technique in this case, you find that the, the, it focuses on social network technique whereby the patient would meet in groups in the, uh, the patient uh, in the um, uh, group session whereby we can bring several families as we have talked of group therapy we can bring several families they discuss as group discuss about their experiences as families for example if they have issues of financial management in the family they can discuss on how they can manage their, their, their issues and how others have managed their issues. There is also reframing, which is a positive connotation technique whereby they, they are able to avoid negative impulses and feelings to change their behavior. The fifth type of the therapy is biofeedback, which is very important, in which case we use uh, um, physiological experiences like temperature and palpitation. The patient is able to, exp to examine themselves and see if they are gaining palpitation as a, as a result of nervousness, then they can uh, remodify their behavior and therefore we have to use techniques like blood, blood pressure machines, pulse rate, temperature thermometer, and also we have to teach the patient on how to relax their muscles and in that case they can manage situations like enuresis and migraine headache which is managed through th through relaxation the sixth method of of therapy is hypnotherapy which we use drugs uh, like hypnotics like um, benzodiazepines the other palm is an example i'm sure you know the other examples you can refer to pharmacology pharmacology notes and in that case the patient is becomes hypnotized to a state of trance and in that case they are able to to verbalize their issues and the, the therapist can interpret their behavior. The seventh type of therapy is cognitive behavioral therapy, which we also call it CBT. Mostly you'll get to, to know it's called CBT. It's based on principle of psychoanalysis, as we have discussed and previously discussed. The patient focuses on the cognitive, that is the knowledge, combined with their behavior of psychology. It helps the patient to be aware of their negative 
malad maladaptive thoughts and associated emotions. If a patient has exaggerated emotions, then they will, uh, they, they will be able to modify their emotions and try to change and manage their emotions. It helps the patient to understand their irrational thoughts and be able to modify their thoughts. They will not rely so much on assumptions and beliefs because they, uh, they encourage those negative behaviors. They are, the patients are able to identify how dysfunctional behaviors they can be managed in their lives. The, it is uh, cognitive behavior, it is managed through several approaches, a systematic desensitization, also gradual exposure and flooding and a fashion therapy. In systematic desensitization, this is when systematically we deduce uh, most feared items slowly by slowly until the patient, uh, from the least feared to highly feared um, item. For example, if patients are afraid of snakes, for example, you start with something like which is mild, like a stick, and then of course you bring slowly by slowly something which will look like a snake, like plastic snakes. Then they interact with it and discover actually it is harmless until you bring the real snake. So in that case, the patient will have relaxed. You can also start with helping the patient to just have imagination in a place of snakes. Then there is um, flooding, which is another uh, kind of approach, in which case if the patient is afraid of cockroaches, for example, some of you are afraid of cockroaches, chameleon, we, we, you are supposed to be brought into a room which is full of chameleons. And then you are, you are closed in, you deal with your own emotions. It's quite frightening for the patient, but over time the patient gets used and discover actually chameleons are quite harmless because most of them will actually run away from the patient's sight. And therefore flooding helps the patient to develop that anxiety to a level that they can be able to manage. The, third, the, the last approach is a fashion therapy, in which case we use noxious stimuli. For example, we have, uh, when we are learning about uh, pharmacology, a drug like, uh, like metronidazole, we say it should not be given to a patient who is drunk, for example, because they will form it. So when we want to manage a patient who has been using alcohol, we just give them metronidazole, that is flagell, and they will form it until it discourages them from um, using, using alcohol. You can also use other behaviors like, like caning the patient, punishing the patient if they, they uh, experience that kind of, they want to demonstrate that kind of behavior. It is kind of a negative stimulus approach whereby we pair the behavior with suppression of that behavior. And uh, we are going to stop there. This is the end of our session. Next time, we'll talk about bio, bio, biological therapies. But before we discuss about that, kindly uh, uh, refer to your notes on pharmacology because biological therapies is mainly about pharmacology and how drugs influence the behavior, uh, mental behaviors of a human being. Thank you so much. Have a safe time. Uh, avoid coronavirus or anything that is noxious to you. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 
2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.